Hello everyone, I just came across uh, some really interesting advice in a letter from Martin Luther 500 years ago in the year 1527. He wrote a letter to a man named Johann Hess, who was a pastor at Breslau on the whole subject of Christians dealing with a plague. And I, I found so many interesting and helpful insights into this that I thought I would share it with you today in light of our own situation. Uh, first of all, what we're dealing with here in the time of Luther is not the same as what we have today with the COVID-19, also known as coronavirus, but the bubonic plague. And this was a terrifying illness that attacked the lymph node system and uh, left untreated would kill half its victims in three to seven days. So, I mean, this was just really a nasty nasty disease. In this time, doctors wore beak masks as uh, personal protection equipment. Uh, we hear a lot about this today in our own situation. Uh, and they had this beak on them, which was really weird looking to us, but it, they loaded it with flowers and herbs and other smells because they believed in those days that the smell was what carried the virus. They didn't understand germ theory yet. And uh, this was just such a an incredible uh, killing machine, this bubonic plague, because tens of millions of people died uh, from this tiny little uh, contagion carried by fleas on the backs of rats. Uh, symptoms could present within a few hours or up to seven days. Uh, of course, today we're dealing with what's called the coronavirus or COVID-19, and uh, this is not nearly as lethal as what they had. In fact, uh, if you look at the stats here, uh, for, for many, many people, they have less than a 1% chance of lethality here, whereas if you get older in age, then you have much more increased chances of it. Uh, but still, even at 80 plus years of age, 14.8% uh, um, have uh, fatality in that category. But that also means that 85% of 80 plus year olds are recovering from this disease. So, you know, just, just to put things in perspective a little bit, what we're going through right now is serious. Um, it can be very scary and, and there are people dying. There's no question about that, but it's still, it's not the worst thing that we've seen as Christians that we've gone through and we can get through this. And so I, I, I saw a number of these quotes. Some people have shared online and social media some of this from luther and i went and i got the original document and uh that's i guess the church historian and me wanted to look at the primary source and see uh what what was the whole letter that he wrote so i, I picked out a number of quotes here that i think will really uh give some good advice to us even today the original letter uh, we have from luther's works in volume 43 whether one may flee from a deadly plague and uh, in this document, I'm just going to share a few quotes, the first of which is, uh, we owe it to our neighbor to accord him the same treatment in other troubles and perils also. So just looking at the general topic of loving your neighbor as yourself, Luther's making an analogy about other situations that our neighbors might find, our, find themselves in. He writes, if his house is on fire, love compels me to run to help him extinguish the flames. If there are enough other people around to put the fire out, I may either go home or remain to help. If he falls into a, the water or into a pit, I dare not turn away, but must hurry to help him as best I can. If there are others to do it, I am released. If I see that he is hungry or thirsty, I cannot ignore him, but must offer food and drink, not considering whether I would risk impoverishing myself by doing so. A man who will not help or support others unless he can do so without affecting his safety or his property will never help his neighbor. Uh, he will always reckon with the possibility that doing so will bring some disadvantage and damage, danger and loss. Anyone who does not do that for his neighbor but forsakes him and leaves him to his misfortune, becomes a murderer. Wow, that's some really strong language there, isn't it? But then he quotes a verse that supports, that supports this statement in the sight of God. As St. John states in his epistles, whoever does not love his brother is a murderer. And again, if anyone who has the world's good and sees his brother in need yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love 
abide in him. So this is really an interesting statement that we find here from Martin Luther talking about how we as Christians should treat our neighbors just in general. Now, when the question of an epidemic, the bubonic plague, the coronavirus, SARS, you know, what have you comes along or even a fire, the question is, well, how do we how do we deal with this as Christians? And I've, I've just found his advice so refreshing and helpful. He says, now, if a deadly epidemic strikes, we should stay where we are, make our preparations and take courage in the fact that we are mutually bound together so that we cannot desert one another or flee from one another. So this is certainly something that resonates with us today in uh, so many of us making our preparations, in particular toilet paper uh, and other things that we, you know, we're staying in place, we're making our preparations. I'm sure that if this situation we're in was not a pandemic, but just more of a locally uh, relevant situation, then many people would flee. But since that's not really relevant to our situ situation right now, uh, you know, we we'll press on. But, you know, the point that he's making here is that, look, if this thing happens, you need, you need to be able to prepare and face it. And don't freak out if you see somebody that's got symptoms. Don't think, oh, they're you know, they're contagious. I must, I must despise them or something like that. Uh, no, we should have mercy and not disgust when it comes to people in this category. He writes, when anyone is overcome by horror and repugnance in the presence of a sick person, he should take courage and strength in the firm assurance that it is the devil who stirs up abhorrence, fear, loathing in his heart. Get away, you devil. Don't you love how Luther writes? Get away, you devil, with your terrors. Just because you hate it, I'll spite you by going the more quickly to help my sick neighbor. Uh, so there it is. We are to help our neighbors in a time like this. Uh, but there are a lot of people, even in our time today, with this situation that uh, seems to be spreading everywhere, that you know, they're just not concerned and they're, they're going, going about their business. They want to gather still in large groups. Uh, th this is really something that um, we, we need to address here and that, in fact, Luther does address. Um, they are much too rash and reckless, tempting God and disregarding everything which might counteract death and the plague. They disdain the use of medicines. They do not avoid places and persons infected by the plague, but lightheartedly make sport of it and wish to prove how independent they are. They say that th that is God's punishment. If he wants to protect them, he can do so without medicines or our carefulness. This is not trusting God, but tempting him. Uh, this is really an excellent point that Luther makes, that uh, just going about our business and, and, and carrying on, especially uh, meeting in large groups, for example, uh, that this really is not appropriate behavior. And it's not really a faith position. It's it's tempting God. It's like when Satan said to Jesus, you know, if you're really the son of God, why don't you throw yourself off the temple? Uh, doesn't scripture say the angels will carry you up and that you won't dash your foot against a stone? And Jesus says, no, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Um, and that's, in, in fact, what, what these people were doing in Luther's time. And maybe even in our time, people are doing this as well. So he continues on and he says as follows that we can live in good health. It is even more shameful for a person to pay no heed to his own body and to fail to protect it against the plague the best he is able and then to infect and poison others who might have remained alive if he had taken care of his body as he should have. Uh, so this is, this is the idea. This is where we're at today. This, this whole idea of quarantine, staying home to slow the spread or flatten the curve. We hear these different terms. And we're doing this not because we're terrified, not because we're uh, afraid of death. We believe Jesus has broken the power of death, but at the same time, we want to act from a place of love and concern for the vulnerable, for the people who are in the, the higher categories of percentage of fatality of this sickness, that we are uh, staying home. And if you need to go out, let mo love be your motivation for going out. Um, and when somebody is in the situation where they are uh, starting to show symptoms, then it's time for the body of Christ to pull together and take care of that person, shopping and doing whatever is necessary. Um, and we don't want to be brash or foolhardy during this time. Uh, Luther goes on and he says, Use medicine. Take potions which can help you. Fumigate house, yard, and street. Shun persons and places wherever your neighbor 
does not need your presence or has recovered, and act like a man who wants to help put out a burning city. <coughs> what else is the epidemic but a fire which, instead of consuming wood and straw, devours life and body? Therefore, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order to not become contaminated and thus perchance infect and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me, and I have done what he has expected of me, and so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. If my neighbors need me, However, I shall not avoid place or person, but I will go freely, as stated above. See, this is such a God-fearing faith, because it is, it is neither brash nor foolhardy, and does not tempt God. If the people in a city were to show themselves bold in their faith, when a neighbor's house, when, when a neighbor's need so demands, and cautious when no emergency exists, and if everyone would help ward off contagion as best he can, then the death toll would indeed be moderate. But if some are too panicky and desert their neighbors and their plight, and if some are so foolish as to not take precautions, but aggravate the contagion, then the devil has a heyday and many will die. Uh, so this is, in fact, so resonating with me today as I think about our own situation and what we're going through today, that we want to be the kind of people that take care of business, take care of our own needs, and then also are able to take care of others who are in need and uh, stop the spread of this, uh, this contagion in our own time. It's, it's so amazing to read something from so many centuries ago that sounds like it was written yesterday. Um, and then what about if you get sick? What if you become symptomatic? What should you do in that case? Should you just continue going to the grocery store? Should you continue going to get the supplies that you need for you know, your daily food and other things? Well, he, he talks about that too. He calls those people sick assassins. Uh, so this is some strong language. He says, some are even worse than that. They keep it secret that they have the disease and go among others. What else are such people but assassins in our town? Here and there, an assassin will jab a knife through someone and no one can find the culprit. So these folk infect a child here, a woman there, and can never be caught. If in the Old Testament, God himself ordered lepers to be banished from the community and compelled to live outside the city to prevent contamination, we must do the same with this dangerous pestilence so that anyone who becomes infected will stay away from other persons or allow himself to be taken away and given speedy help with medicine. Under such circumstances, it is our duty to assist such a person and not forsake him in his plight, as I have repeatedly pointed out before. Then the poison is stopped in time, which benefits not only the individual, but also the whole community, which might be contaminated if one person is permitted to affect others. So I say to you, if you have symptoms, tell on yourself. You don't need to suffer in silence. You know, there's a hotline you can call. Uh, you can call your doctor, call the hospital, go get tested. And if you're negative, then great. And if you're positive, then it's time to do the responsible thing. And that is to self-quarantine. And we are here for you as a Living Hope community. We have a care team set up. Uh, we just need you to let us know that you're going through this, that you're self-quarantining. You let us know and we will activate that team. People are standing by ready to uh, show hospitality and love to those who are in need at this time. Uh, so I do encourage you to get in touch if you uh, would like some help. Uh, and uh, I've got the email address here, info at lhim.org, as well as our phone number, 518-785-8888. Let us know. Uh, also, let us know of other needs. We can add them to our prayer list. Uh, just get in touch through uh, the email or the phone number, and uh, we'll get that out on the prayer list as well. So uh, just by way of conclusion here, I wanted to give some reminders, some reminders. Now that we have a little wisdom here from the time of Luther that, look, this is an appropriate Christian response, quarantine, uh, but also care uh, for neighbor and everything motivated uh, by love and not by fear. And uh, yet there are still a couple of reminders I wanted to, to give you. The first one of these reminders is that... Uh, God is still on the throne. Amen, huh? God is still on the throne, and he will see us through. This is 
this is nothing new for him. You know, he's he's been here all the while, and he's going to see us through this situation as well. Number two, the hope is an anchor for our souls. Jesus is coming back. God is going to heal our world. He's going to set everything wrong with the world right. And uh, he's already broken the power of death. And that if we put our faith in Christ, he will raise us up on the last day. Number three, let love motivate all you do. Stay home because of love. Go out because of love. Tell on yourself if you've got symptoms because of love. And uh, the more that we are motivated by love, the more we're going to find ourselves doing the same kinds of things that we saw Jesus doing in the Gospels as our example. And then last of all, pray, pray, pray. Pray for God's deliverance because in the end, that's really the only thing that's going to bring this about is that God will uh, work through the different individuals and through the different situations to, to bring an end to this situation. So that's my encouragement for you today.